Mini budget, but for all so crashing the economy thanks to our departure from the EU. Um, Matthew Elliott he founded one of these Tufton Street, Tufton Street think tanks um, that sits alongside the IEA, Littlewoods IEA. That's called the Taxpayers Alliance, and so that advocates for lower taxes, particularly for the rich and a small estate um, as does the Fulwoods organisation. And it's worth reminding the listeners at this point because, let's face it, a lot has happened in a very short space of time. But what that disastrous budget delivered us uh, was an uncosted abolition of the highest rate of tax uh, for the richest people in this country. And that was an absolute central plank, wasn't it, of um, the economic theory of these think tanks. I'm going to come back and talk to you more about the think tanks in a moment. Uh, meanwhile, the, the, the finalist on, uh, on this particular uh, list of uh, nominations uh, by Liz Truss uh, for a peerage, meaning they sit in the House of Lords and they become lawmakers, so certainly part of the um, consultative process, is Ruth Porter. Who is she? So, Ruth Porter is very well known to Mark Littlewood as well, having been the Director of Communications at the IEA a few years ago now, it has to be said, but um, Porter in more recent times is a lobbyist, a public affairs specialist, so she will advocate on behalf of various um, corporate and non-government organisations to try and influence government policy, and she was Je Deputy Chief of Staff during Trump's very shortly tenure in Tendown Street. Right, so basically she was Chief of Staff for a Prime Minister whose government only lasted 49 days, and yet the rules seem to allow Liz Trust to create a resignation uh, honours list, or nominations list at least. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, what's that? You know, it's, it's basically one for every 10 days, um, which is ludicrous, and we've, I think, as you said in your int introduction, this is systemic. This has happened for a, a long time. I mean, you know, we could have been talking a fortnight ago about Boris Johnson seemingly wanting to nominate his own father for a peerage, which, you know, that seems to be the direction of travel as well. Um, so like you say, there's, there's, there's definitely a case to be made that the people at the top have a sense of impunity a sense that no matter what they do, they can reward both themselves and their allies after office. And this just speaks, I think, to the fact that Liz Truss doesn't have contrition for what she did. She doesn't think, oh, I crashed the economy. Actually, she's trying to reward the people who helped her in that process. And that, to me, speaks to a, you know, a fundamental uh, lack of accountability in our political system. Does it speak to entitlement of a specific class of people? I mean, you've just written a book called The Bullingdon Club. Well, what's it called? Bullingdon Club oh. Britain. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think there are many institutions of power in this country, not just Westminster, but that seems to be the sort of poisonous heart of it, um, that encourage those with inherited wealth to abuse their power. I mean, you know, we've had... Is, two it, all inher ministers. is it all inherited? Most of it, yes. I mean, to go to Eton and then to get into the Bullingdon Club, which um, I would say educated, but it doesn't educate anybody at the Bullingdon Club. It sort of provides a forum for debauchery. Um, you know, that's, that's had David Cameron in it, it's had George Osborne in it, it's had Boris Johnson in it in recent years. And you only get into the Bollingham Club if you come from a particular class of people. And that class of people is the aristocracy. And then they filter through down from Eton, the Bollingham Club, into Westminster. So since, you know, they've basically been out of diapers, they're taught that they can, that they're elevated to positions of power 
based on their inherited social privilege. And obviously this trust wasn't quite like that. She was comprehensively educated. And Johnson think, wasn't aristocracy, isn't aristocracy. No, and in fact, I was speaking to a former Bullington Club member the, the other day, and he was saying that in many ways that, that's even more dangerous because they feel as though they have something to prove. There's still a sense of, I need to um, compete with those who are more aristocratic than I am. And I think that sort of the, the pervasiveness of privilege in Westminster causes particularly those who have a free market mindset to compete and to actually, actually be more extreme politically than you know the lords, the baronesses, the the people who've inherited their wealth, um, the, the you know the castled, moneyed classes. Okay, Sam. So the question I'm asking listeners this hour is: Is the honours system, specifically peerages, I'm very interested in, is that system broken? Or is it just the people who have access to the system that are in fact broken? I mean, I, I would say the system itself is broken, or at least you need to you need to reform the system to encourage people to behave better. Uh, you know, it's it's regretful, but this has been happening not just under Conservative rule, but this was a feature of um, Labour rule as well, New Labour rule. Um, you know, prior, prior to this, I mean, there's a whole host of, you know, former party stooges, you know, Labour Party, um, you know, people on the inside of New Labour who got peerages. You might say, you know, they did a lot for the country, but they were close to those in power. Um, and so I think there needs to be a fundamental reform of the House of Lords in general. I mean, like you say, I mean, lots of people will highlight the fact that these people can claim expenses um, and it costs a lot of money and that they're getting re rewarded financially. But I think the more important thing, as you mentioned, is the fact that these people are on the inside of Westminster, that they sort of stalk the corridors of power. They can, they can twist the ear of Downing Street. And I think that's deeply corrosive. I mean, these people may... You know, lots of them are very well educated, they're very smart. We may not agree with what they think. Um, but the fundamental thing is that it creates a lack of trust in democracy when you've got cronies being put in positions of power. It just doesn't look good. And it, at a moment when we've had the expenses scandal, we've had, um, you know, the banking crash, we've had the second job scandal, we've had Brexit, we've had Partygate, we need politicians to be sort of entrenching trust in our democracy more than ever, rather than, you know, just furthering this process of democratic erosion. Sam Bright, investigative journalist and author of Bullingdon Club Britain. Thank you very much indeed. My question to you this hour, Liz Truss, Prime Minister of only 49 days, is nominating four people from her government to become lawmakers. Is the honour system broken? 0345 6060 I'm Sangeeta Maiska. This is LBC. This is LBC. So you're a small business owner. Instead of perfecting your client's honey blonde balayage, you're navigating a spreadsheet. Instead of fitting kitchens, you're replying to emails. And instead of designing a giant frog for a client's website, you're chasing payments. With AXA Business Insurance, it's easy to tailor your insurance to get the cover that's right for you. So you know you can get back to doing what your business does best. AXA Business Insurance. No, you can. <laughs> Tax Insurance UK PLC is authorised by the Prudential Regulation Authority and regulated by the Prudential Regulation Authority and the Financial Conduct Authority. At Tesco Mobile, we're a little bit, and a little bit, the best of, and the very best of. We call it Supermarket Mobile. It's why we offer helpful extras like club card points towards your weekly shop, so your can help your. This is Super Helpful Mobile. This is Supermarket Mobile. Tesco Mobile, every little helps. Tesco Club Card holders only. Collect one Club Card point for every £1 spent. See tescomobile.com slash Club Card points. If you bought a timeshare, did you really get what you expected? Or were you sold a dream that's now a nightmare? 
with high maintenance fees, loss of exclusivity, and limited availability. Timeshare ownership for many is now just a liability. MyTimeshareClaim.co.uk has helped thousands of owners who are missold exit their contract and receive compensation. For advice and to find out more about your options, text TIMESHARE to 78900. Rising costs forcing you into unaffordable debt. An individual voluntary arrangement from Credit Fix could help. Write off up to 81% of your unsecured debt with manageable repayments and all interest and charges frozen. With over 14,000 five-star reviews on Trustpilot, Credit Fix could help you to a brighter financial future. Just text DEBT to 6677. Text DEBT to 6677 now. Trustpilot Minutes and Credit Rating Free Advice by Health.org.uk. Talk to us, it pays to switch to full fiber broadband. Get a reward card worth up to £100 with selected full fiber plans. Prices start at £32 a month for 18 months with a £50 reward card. Choose our most reliable connection ever with speeds up to 944 megabits per second. Hurry, deals end 12 of April. Search Talk Talk Full Fiber. CPI plus 3.7% annual increase from April 2024. Subject to the availability. Reward cards issued by Gift Cloud. See talktalk.co.uk slash reward card for details. You make the moments that matter. Order before 9pm for next day delivery at zincflowers.com. See website for details. Sandy Tomeiska on LBC. Call 0345 6060 973. Sandy Tomaska here with you until 4 o'clock on LBC. Uh, my question to you, do you think the honours list, do you think it, it, the way in which we allow former Prime Ministers to appoint their mates into the House of Lords, do you think that system is broken? And if the system isn't broken, are you happy with the way in which former Prime Ministers go about appointing their mates? Because Actually, I've been someone who's been quite a supporter of the House of Lords. Don't throw things at the radio. And the reason is, by default. Personally, I have never heard anyone make the argument for a really viable alternative. I know citizens' assemblies are something lots of people talk about. I did quite an in-depth look at those, and I'm just not convinced they are particularly effective. And actually, the whole point of the House of Lords is that it is a revising chamber, and that the people inside that chamber bring with them a whole host of expertise with which they can scrutinise legislation properly. And I think the place that it's gone wrong is not necessarily that idea, but rather when people start nominating their dads or nominating their chiefs of staff who've only worked 49 days, as Liz Truss has just done, that's what brings the whole system into disrepute. So, do you think the old system is broken? And if so, I'm really interested in hearing what you think could replace the House of Lords. What will he throw? Hello, the new caller, I right hear. Hello, yeah, nice to speak to you. Nice to speak to you. Um, oh, thank you very much. Um, yeah, I, I think she's okay to do it. I mean, if all the other five ministers can do it, then why not? I think, yeah, no, I do, I understand. What you're saying is it's a convention, so why should you yeah. not benefit from that convention? And I think that's a reasonable yeah. argument. Um, yeah. But, but, can I put this to you? And the contrary argument, which I also think is eminently reasonable, is that she was only there for 49 days. She was forced to resign. She was forced to resign because of a catastrophic error of judgment in her um, uh, economic plan. And people, taxpayers, citizens, voters, particularly those with um, variable mortgages who had to be mortgaged, or fixed rate mortgages at the time that had to be mortgaged, they are the ones who are literally paying the price for what she did in just 49 days. So morally, is it right she's allowed to? 
well, when you put it like that, <laughs> very sad. Um, yeah, I'd, oh, I just think that, you know, change the rules then, you know, but don't give her a hard time. You know, just, you know, maybe, maybe they should change the rules and then go from there. Uh, I know that Boris wanted his dad. Um, and I, I can't see a problem with that because I, uh, well, my parents aren't alive anymore, but I think my dad would have been the first person I would have if it was me. But, but uh, no, no, you make some very good points, and I can, I can think that way and think about that. Thank you very much for letting me speak. Oh, you're very welcome, Robin. You called me. Do I bring again? Um, Dan, in Barnett, hello. Oh, hi, thank you. Thank you for taking my call. You're very welcome. Um, I, I think um, being a bit nice, maybe you have to be a bit nicer to this trust than I would be. Um, I'm in a position to not be any person who's done something like this, but I, for me, it feels like a form of corruption rather than um, an expression of their entitlement. They're basically, I mean, she is directly uh, enabling her former boss at the um, think tank where she worked before she was in PLC. should exist. Um, unfortunately, in very wealthy individuals, and actually same with unions, I don't think, I, I'm very concerned about the way in which money is attached to our politics. And I suppose, um, you know, if we were to follow the law and follow the rules, we would have to say, we can't prove that this is cash bonus, so therefore it's not corruption. But you say actually it has shades of it anyway. Well, but do you think, actually, rather than a legal, criminal form of corruption, do you think what we're really talking about is a kind of moral or ethical bankruptcy at the heart of politics at the very top? Completely. I think the only point that your previous call had to make is that there needs to be more rights attached to the honest system. So, for example, if a prime minister has been tipped out of office by his own party because they turned on him, then he shouldn't be allowed to be honest if, if a party legal prime minister has you know, put 40 billion pounds of debt on the British population. Not through error of judgment, I disagree with you on that. And so he does, I think it's just ideology. Um, and it has impoverished a lot of people in this country and has been kicked out after 40 days. They don't get the privilege of putting people in the House of Lords. There should be more rules to. Um, if you can have a system of, of handing out these, these things, and I'm not suggesting you should have some kind of system, then there should be some oversight to make sure that A, the people who are giving them out is, have earned the right to do so, and that the people they're giving them to have actually contributed in some direct way to the country, not just to a very narrow political base. Dan, I don't think you've been very politely correcting me, and I absolutely take your arm. No, 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 She's in work, and Joe Fox, the workers, have had to step in and reverse that entire budget and go from one to the other.
a full plot government for privileges, which means that you will sit in the House of Lords and make laws. Do you think that the honor system is broken, or do you think actually that there are politicians who are just manipulating the system? Which is it? Perhaps there's a third option. 0345 606 I'm Sangeeta Maiska. This is LBC. Let's catch up with news headlines with John Stratford. The government's understood to be about to announce that thousands of migrants being housed in hotels will be moved to military bases or even disused ferries. The Home Office hasn't confirmed the reports, but says it's always been upfront about the unprecedented pressure being placed on the asylum system. At least 23 people have died and dozens of buildings have been destroyed after a powerful tornado tore through rural parts of the US state of Mississippi. Four other people are reported to be missing. Dozens have been injured. And opposition MPs have reacted angrily to reports Liz Truss has put forward four close supporters for peerages in her resignation honours list. Labour and the Lib Dems have called on Rishi Sunak to block the nominations. The weather, the sun spells and showers for much of the UK. More persistent rain will arrive in the far southwest this evening. The high of 14. LBC. In a crisis, service matters. Which surveys more than 10,000 energy customers and independently assess the performance of every major supplier? Only one measured up. Optimus Energy is the only which recommended energy supplier. Optimus Energy, recommended by which? Six years running. And the man is a very nice year. And we are with her. The class of the US was the fourth of the third year. We are indeed more colour, more more delight, more flavour. Yeah, but we want competition to be able to do it. With more, of course, the nation's favourite stock. That's right, so we've got a little chicken, more chicken, confident, coming on a lot. We need to be sure we can do it tonight. Just be sure we do it. Give it more.
I mean, the last couple of Prime Ministers, 03456060973, Geoffrey, a new caller from Windsor. Hello, Geoffrey. Thank you for picking up the phone. Yeah, I, I got your name. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, I keep getting told off <laughs> in a nice way, yeah, in a very yeah. nice way. Of the day to recognise people that they think um, are, are, 
not deserving of a seat in the House of Lords. People that have voted in uh, uh, during their life or uh, done significant things in public life to support the Prime Minister or to support the government uh, as a whole in a particular way. Uh, and it, it, it's a special right, as it were, I guess, uh, for the Prime Minister to, to make those appointments. And, and you're right, you know, we've seen at uh, least trust. Uh, her appointments and the nominations that she's putting forward to the Honours Committee to sit in the House of Lords is a lot shorter, we understand, from uh, perhaps previous uh, Prime Ministers. Um, but nonetheless, I, uh, I understand it's caused a, a bit of stir. But, but I suppose, Charlie, the heart of this is, and this is really what, why I want to talk to you, really for a bit of reassurance, if you can offer it, is there a check and a balance on Liz Truss and her nominations? Because many people feel really aggrieved at the fact that somebody who only was in office for 49 days and crushed the economy is able to get her people and not just her people in government but people whose flawed ideology led to the crushing of the economy temporarily into the house of lords and therefore allowing them to sit in the consultative chamber when it comes to legislation is there a check on this? Well, there, there should be. Um, I mean, I think the, the, the beautiful question about the House of Lords is an interesting one. It's, uh, it's one that I think the court is just picking up on a second ago because I, um, uh, it's not a, a majority view at all. I personally favour a more uh, appointed House of Lords to counterbalance the uh, uh, democratically elected Joe Biden Cummings. But I think that would only work if you have a House of Lords that is not just packed out with politicians, but people that have actually served in public life. So uh, you actually have a second chamber of doctors, nurses, teachers, uh, people that have served in charity organisations, in finance, in banking, and politics, and everywhere else in creative industries to ensure that you have a balanced House of Lords. So when it comes to legislating, and those that are democratically elected in the Commons are putting forward legislation, mm. you then have a chamber that can actually balance that conversation and say, well, look, um, because you don't know who you're going to elect, so you might be a great politician, you might be a good spokesperson in the Commons, but you know, do we have a Commons chamber that is actually reflective on society? Do we have enough MPs that they're going to try to be a teacher or a nurse or a doctor or something? We do have them, but I just think having a balanced chamber in the round, uh, and the only way you get that balance chamber is, I'm afraid, just going to be through appointments rather than an elected chamber. But I know that's sort of side point to the topic. Um, no, but that's just quite central, isn't it? Because what you're saying is, we can have appointments, it just needs to be a very different kind of appointment. Charlie, I have to leave there because we've got loads of calls, but Charlie Rowley, Conservative commentator, who is special advice to Prime Minister Theresa May, and later Michael Gove, and to Lebanon Secretary. Thank you very much indeed. Um, let's get Mary Lowestoft on quickly before, before we hit the break. Mary. Yes, hello. Fascinating conversation. Um, I've been listening to, to you, and I, the thing that struck me is all of this system, it all works for them, doesn't it, really? You know, they donate to their party, etc. They back them when they run for office. Uh, where are we in all this? Good question. Where are we in all this? We aren't anywhere. But yeah, I mean, I can see your point that we really need something other than this thing. As you come in, I get that, but as you pointed out, I, I'm not sure what the alternative is. But um, as I said, I don't know where we come into all of this. Well, you say it's for them and they benefit. Who is they? The politicians, you know, the people that they do me. When Tony Blair was in office, he was, he was asked about it, wasn't he? He said, perhaps, and he said, it's always been the case that it's people who do need money who get to know who wants. See, what's extraordinary about that, Mary, is that, from your description at least, Tony Blair saying, well, this is just the way it's always been, so it's okay. But it's not. Yeah, but that, to me, epitomizes their attitude. As you were talking about earlier, they just think that they, they can do all this stuff and get away with it. Marion Lowestoft in Suffolk, thank you very much indeed. I mean, she's right, isn't she? She's managed to beautifully knit together these two big ideas that I wanted to bring together and probably couldn't myself. There's Mary saying, hang on a minute, the system is broken. We probably shouldn't have peers appointed in this way. But there's a sense of entitlement, and it's always been lost. But why should it be? Mary, thank you for your call. So my question to you is, with Liz Truss appointing four of her fell government, or hoping to appoint four of her fell government, to the House of Lords, is the system broken? Is the honest system broken? Or 
Is it just that we have a bunch of politicians who take advantage of it? 0345 6060 Coming up at four on LBC, Emily Sheffield. In the week, Keir Starmer and Rishi Sunak published their tax returns. Does the wealth of our political leaders matter? Can you be too rich to govern? Emily Sheffield on LBC. We need a serious spring clear out. I mean, when's the last time you used this stuff? Vintage cameras, old toys, and this gold jewelry's broken. I'm not keeping it, love. I'm selling it to Vintage Cash Cow. Oh, yeah? They have a free insured postal service, give a price within three working days, and send the money to your account within 24 hours. Well, you'd better spring into action. Text Vintage to 60777 to order your free postage bag. Business owners. This is a sleep soundscape when you're managing finances with intimate windows. Invoicing. Cash flow. Expenses. All connected. Sleep easily with a complete view of your business finances. Get peace of mind. Get quick books. If you've lost £3,000 or more in a scam or fraud, then tell CEL. CELsolicitors.co.uk specialise in confidential, no win, no fee, fraud and scam recovery. So if you purchased a high fund license like a car but never received the goods, you could have been scammed. Don't let them get away with it. Let us help you try to get your money back. We listen, we care, we win. Of rising costs forcing you into unaffordable debt. An individual voluntary arrangement from Credit Fix could help. Write off up to 81% of your unsecured debt with manageable repayments and all interest and charges frozen. With over 14,000 five star reviews on Trustpilot, Credit Fix could help you to a brighter financial future. Just text debt to 6677. Text debt to 6677 now. Terms apply, Bell and Singapore for all kind of fit credit rating. Free advice by health.org.uk. Investing with AJ Bell feels so good, you'll just want to ring that bell anywhere, anytime. In the office, in a pub, on a bus, on a ship, on a train, in the rain, in the gym, in the library, at a wedding, at a librarian's wedding. You can even ring it in space. On metal Or just a good old fashioned cowbell. Yes, that's the sweet sound of investing with AJ Bell. AJ Bell, feel good investing. Value of investment in the jam is one's up. Only hopes puffed. Since its lightness, its puffiness, unleash the delicious taste of Hula Licious. Hula Lightful. Hula Hoops Puffed. Light Bobby Hoops in a range of delicious flavors and 72 calories per pack. Hula Licious. Hula Lightful. It's almost that time of the week again. So, who's going to win tonight's Lotto Jackpot? It could be the dad who always picks his kids' birthdays. It could be the girlfriend picking the date of her anniversary. Oh, you Or tonight, it could be you. Don't miss tonight's Lotto Jackpot. Play on Lotto from the National Lottery. Account terms for awesome procedures apply. Class must be 18 or over. Business owners, this is a sleep soundscape when you manage your finances with intimate QuickBooks. Invoicing. Cash flow. Expenses. All connected. Sleep easily with a complete view of your business finances.